Previously on RVing to Alaska, we say goodbye to the River House and pay tribute to her for the lifetime of memory she has provided us and the past 10 years of being our home base before we shut the door for the final time in this very emotional episode. Be sure to like and subscribe to follow us on this crazy thing called life and our new adventure of living full time in Alaska. On May 6th, we closed our front door of my childhood homestead for the final time as we began a 2,800 mile journey north to Alaska. As we left our friends and family behind as we drove east, we pondered on our future with excitement but was still the unknown if Canada would allow us entry to transit through their country during COVID and closed borders. Goodbye Washington forever. Crossing the Spokane River. And as the sign says, welcome to Idaho. That's Lake Coeur d'Alene, right? Yeah, that's nice and refreshing. Gary was driving the motorhome, pulling the 16-foot enclosed trailer. I was driving our 3500 Ram pickup truck, pulling a 24-foot enclosed trailer. While our friends, Mike and Bobby, Alaskan residents who flew down for this truck, drove our F-150, pulling a flatbed trailer with our Ranger on the back. Here we are at the top of Lookout Pass as we leave Idaho and enter Montana. This is our last state in the U.S. until we cross tomorrow in Alberta. Well, we've made our first potty stop. We're just a couple miles inside Montana and all is well. Gary's checked all of the trailers. All right, you ready to hit the road? Oh, I'm blown out. There we go. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mike's going to lead us into Missoula since they have the address for the uh, location of our test. All right. Have to do. So, uh, you want to... Okay, you can just stay in the back until we get close to town. Okay. All right. Love you. Love you, too. You're doing good back there. That trailer's, that trailer's just going to ride right behind you. It doesn't drive the same. I, no, it doesn't. It because scares the living bejesus out of me. You're pulling 10,000 feet behind, or 10,000 pounds behind you. No, right? It doesn't track the same. No. Do you, you, you're doing good, though, baby. Let's go. We got. We got. We got to get a. Keep your feet up a little bit. I'm trying. Oh. So our COVID tests are in an hour and 15 minutes, and we're gonna be pushing it. So we're out of here. Let's hit the road. In preparation for this move, I had done my due diligence and homework to make sure we had everything available to give to Canadian authorities upon arrival to the border. First order of business was stopping in Missoula, Montana to get our rapid PCR tests, called an ID now, which should give us results back in less than 24 hours to meet Canada's COVID arrival requirements with a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of arrival. Well, just an update. We are in Missoula, Montana, and we had our COVID tests. So far, two of the four of us have got our results back, and both so far are 50, er, 50%. We're negative, so that's good news. We're just waiting on Bobby and Gary's test results, and we're filling up with gas. We've left I-90, and now we're on Highway 200, headed up uh, towards Great Falls and uh, Cut Bank and Shelby. Shelby is our final destination tonight, where we will stay the night and cross into Canada as long as Bobby and Gary's tests come back negative. So it's been a great day. It's been a little learning curve driving Big Blue with the trailer in back. But all in all, 
can't complain. With Canada's new travel requirements, an arrival test is still needed as of August 2021. So we recommend finding a Walgreens drugstore that offers the ID Now PCR test. It's fast, convenient, and free, and meets all of Canadian requirements. How you doing? Hi, pumpkin. You awake finally? Many have questioned why we chose to cross in Montana versus Washington or Idaho, and the main reason was Montana had the on-site COVID testing station for our second COVID test. It was the most direct route to the Alcan, keeping us out of Canadian national parks, and it was the flattest route with the cheapest fuel in Alberta. Well, good morning from Shelby, Montana. We had a semi-restful uh, evening. We are straight across the street from train tracks. So as you know, if you've ever boondocked near train tracks, it can be a little noisy. But we're just doing final preparations before we cross into Canada in the morning, or not in the morning, in like an hour or two. Uh, the boys are flipping our hitch on the motorhome trailer, that one right there. It was riding a little high yesterday and just to save our tires, we're gonna flip it around and get it more level. And then we'll be heading towards Sweetgrass uh, in Coots, uh, Alberta. So, sorry, running on about five hours sleep and it's gonna be another big day, 530 some miles today, so. Let's get ready to cross the Canadian border. The time had finally come after months of wondering if we would be allowed passage through Canada was upon us. We arrived prepared, maybe too prepared, with detailed inventory lists for each vehicle and trailer. We had all the dog's health records and certificates, our real estate documents showing us severing ties in the lower 48 and even more real estate documents showing our intent to make Alaska our new home. This was our last hurdle of this ginormous move to Alaska. We have arrived and we're about 14 or 15 cars back. So it's gonna be quite a wait. In all, it took four hours for the four of us to be cleared at the border. One hour was waiting in line to get to the vehicle gate. The next two and a half hours were spent inside immigration to be cleared and get our visas issued. And the last half hour was spent taking our second arrival COVID test. After being cleared, we headed north towards Edmonton with over 500 miles planned for that day, with our overnight destination being in White Court, Alberta. The following morning, while on a rest stop when checking on our tires, we noticed unusual wear on two of the tires of the trailer I was pulling. So when passing through Grand Prairie, Alberta, we stopped at the Fountain Tire off of Highway 43 for an emergency swap out. The tires on our enclosed trailer were not the best to begin with, and to be honest, we may have been a little overweight. So we upgraded all the tires on the trailer to a better brand suited with thicker ply tires. We were so thankful for this to show up when it did and where it did, because we were just about to leave civilization for good as we made our way north towards the Alcan. Today was another long haul with over 500 miles ahead of us with Fort Nelson as our planned overnight stop. 
Our emergency stop for tires cost us close to three hours, making it an even longer day. But first, we needed to torque our new tires, so our next stop was Dawson Creek at mile zero of the Alaska Highway. Mile zero, right here. We made it in two days. One and a half. One and a half, here we are. So we have made it to the Alcan and we've already been yelled at to go home and guess what? We are! We're going home! <laughs> Other than the rude people at mile zero flipping us the middle finger salute and yelling at us to go home, all interactions with any Canadians at our multiple fuel stops were pleasant and respectful. Most were curious as to our experience at the border and wished us well on our journey. If you have watched any of our videos, you know that we always say the best thing of RVing to Alaska is Canada. And although we couldn't take our time on this trip, we can't wait for the day when we can return at a more leisurely rate. Welcome to Taylor! We have a member who lives here. So, hello! I'm sorry I don't remember your name, but I remember you always saying you're in Taylor. Did you know we run one of the largest Facebook groups on the RVing to Alaska topic? We are easy to find. Just look for RVing to Alaska the current year, and the words original behind it. Every travel season, we run a group page where we help educate on the RVing to and within Alaska topic. So for example, right now, just type in RVing to Alaska 2021 original and you will find us. Even with closed borders this summer, we've had members find alternative ways to get up to Alaska and enjoy this summer where they use our group page to share their travels through pictures, videos, and reviews of all the places they visited. It's an online group collaboration to find community while on the road in Alaska. This is our fifth year running these group pages and they get bigger every year. Even our 2022 group is larger today than at the end of our first year back in 2017. passage, the Canadian authorities gave us a five-day time frame to get through Canada, and at this point we were making good progress as we start to cross the northern Rocky Mountains in British Columbia. Well, good morning everyone. I apologize, I'm going to just make this short and sweet because we are already on the road. This is our third day of driving in Canada, and we are headed towards Johnson's Crossing in the Yukon, which is just south of Whitehorse. Last night we stayed in Fort Nelson, had a good night's rest, and it's another 500 mile day today, 512 actually, miles to uh, get to our overnight resting spot. Uh, today we will exit British Columbia and enter the Yukon. Uh, today we should also see lots of wildlife. We'll be going over the Rocky Mountains and with that we should have bighorn sheep, uh, some bears, and most definitely we will see some bison. So exciting day. Uh, we woke up to rain, but it seems to have cleared up a little. It's still cloudy, but the roads are dry. So it should be a great drive as we work our way to the Yukon and northern British Columbia. The bear on the right side of the road with the motor off in the camera has to stop if we can see him. He's going down. Tell him, Sophie. 
actually caught a bear. I didn't think I was gonna be able to do that. Thank you guys. So, very cool. First bear of the day spotted. This portion of the drive through the Northern Rockies is always spectacular. It is also one of the biggest wildlife corridors you will see with caribou, bears, bighorn sheep, and bison frequently slowing you down for the perfect photo op. We've taken this route in both directions in years past and have never been disappointed in the drive. <laughs> It's a toss-up between what route we like more. The Alcan gives you big sweeping distant views with big shoulders to see wildlife ahead versus the Cassiar that puts snow-capped rugged mountains in your windshield the entire drive up. All right, we are here at the Testa River Lodge and we came specifically for these world-famous cinnamon buns. Extra bud, extra buttery, extra delicious, it looks like. Absolutely. All right, after a small stop at the Testa River Lodge for some amazing sticky cinnamon buns, we're back on the road. I highly recommend it. Uh, recommend stopping and visiting Gail and Ben at Testa River Lodge on your next journey up or down the Alcan. Again, we can't say thank you enough to Gail and Ben for inviting us to stop and say hello and for a sweet treat of cinnamon buns at the Testa River Lodge. It was Mother's Day that day, and it gave us a sense of home, even though we were away from our loved ones as we traveled north. On your next visit to Testa River Lodge, be sure to tell them RVing to Alaska sent you and show them a little love. These two years have been hard on these small family-ran businesses along the Alcan. I have to be honest, this is one of the longest drives I've ever made in my life. As the passenger, almost 100% of the time, sitting in the driver's seat for over 2,800 miles was a daunting task, especially with the added factor of pulling approximately 10,000 pounds behind me in a pull-behind trailer. By the fourth day of driving, I had become better accustomed to the drive and was finally comfortable behind the wheel.
now reached the Muncho Lake region of the Alcan, and Mother Nature kicks up the wildlife viewing for us as we make our way north. Sophie made sure to stay awake for this portion of the drive and protect her mommy. <laughs> so we are stopped at Muncho Lake and the trucks are not getting the best fuel mileage. The trucks aren't getting the best fuel mileage just because we are uh, carrying heavy loads with the trailers. So we've decided we've decided just to top off with one can each uh, so we for sure get into Watson Lake. I think last gas check, sorry there's some wind, last gas, gas check I was going to be one mile short of getting into Watson. So with a can, extra can of fuel, we should make it to the next gas station. We will. We will, yes. We did have opportunity to stop at some of the roadhouses, but it would have I been win. really oh, expensive. <laughs> oh, you're done? Yeah. Well, that was a lot faster than this one. This one actually works. Wow. This new one actually works. This that one crap. This one new system. You could pour this one into that one. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, in an emergency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this this will be for starting fires at the new property. So we have there you go. Actually, this is. I think this is the longest distance we have to go without fuel right now. Yes, this is the longest stretch. Yeah. If, if we needed fuel, this was gonna this be one where. Be where and, and this is where it was. <laughs> Well, the fuel in the cans was a lot cheaper than the than the lodge. Uh, yes. Cold River Lodge. I don't even know how much it was. We didn't stop. Uh, Here you go. That made pressure washer. <laughs> <laughs> a ranger trick. <sighs> to get the mud off. <laughs> you butthead. See how well it works? <laughs> <laughs> The cap off, uh, no more squirt. Now drink. <laughs> Our brief refueling stop and stretching our legs in Muncho Lake, we headed back out on the road as it was nearing 2 p.m. and we wanted to set ourselves up for a good arrival time into Watson Lake to start our 24-hour clock to get through the Yukon. Another herd of bison. 
Gary's going to pull over so I can take closer video. And Mike and Bobby are actually at another group behind us. So this will give them a chance to catch up. Okay. Sophie, are you talking to the bison, the Tatanka? Huh? Are you saying hi? Yeah. Yeah. Says the five pound dog to the however big buffalo. I must say, I was very glad that we had Bobby as a relief driver if needed. I had only needed her one other time on the first day of driving in Canada from exhaustion, but this time I needed her when I had an allergic reaction to a sparkling water that I had tried for the very first time. So for the next hour or so, I took a break in the passenger seat until we reached Watson Lake. During COVID times, the Yukon had set up their own provincial laws and only allowed travelers 24 hours to pass through its 555 miles of highway from Watson Lake to the Alaskan border. Considering we had already driven several hundred miles under our tires that day, we wanted to give ourselves a good allotment of time for an overnight rest period to allow ourselves to be out of the Yukon and Canada within 24 hours from now. It was 5.30 p.m. and our 24-hour window to be out of Canada has begun. Like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for our next video 
where we spend our last 24 hours in Canada as we traverse the Yukon and finally reach the 49th state and our new home of Houston, Alaska. But not before experiencing major engine issues that stop us dead in our tracks, literally just miles from home.